Today I'm going to install Cooler Master's Hyper TX3 in place of Intel's stock cooler in my system. There are plenty of videos on the interwebs that preview opening and installing Cooler Master's Hyper TX3, but not too many that I've found that show temperatures in depth that compare the TX3 to the Intel stock cooler. The TX3 will obviously do better, I assume, but how much better? First, I'd like to say that these results are for cooling my old Q6600 overclocked at 2.9 GHz, so results for other CPUs may vary. This is just a general test to see where temps are going with this cooler versus Intel's stock design cooler. As you can see here, this is the Intel stock cooler. It served me well as I've been brave enough to overclock and game on its reliability. But today we're going with the Hyper TX3 to squeeze what little life we can out of my Q6600. Upgrade from the Q6600, you say? And I shall in due time, but for now, it overclocks to a respectable 3.2 GHz per core, and it has me gaming my favorite games over 60 frames a second, so for now, we'll just keep using it, and we'll see if we can cool it down a little bit. Now first off, there were several options for new heat sinks on the market that I found. I did have some Newegg points, so that limited me to Newegg's website. But Newegg pretty much has everything that I needed, so I ended up going with the Hyper TX3 for its three direct connect heat pipes, its large 92mm fan, and its second mounting option for another 92mm fan, which others did not have that mounting hardware included. I happen to have another 92mm fan laying around, so this to me was a good selling point, and if you have another fan or want another fan in your system, this may be the cooler for you. Let's get with some test results here. I will time lapse these video clips that show temperatures from idle to full load for time's sake. To test here, I'm using Specky to monitor temperatures. There are many other programs out there that will do this, but I'm going to use this one today. And to push the chip to 100% usage, I'm going to go with Intel's processor diagnostics tool. This will test to see if I'm stable at 2.9 GHz overclock, and it will also push the processor to 100% usage to fully maximize temperatures there to see if we have efficient cooling with the Hyper TX3. For the four tests that we're going to run today, each test will be ran using freshly installed thermal paste. Arctic Silver number 5 is the thermal paste that I'm going with here. It may be wasteful to install it each time, but I just want to make sure that we get fair results for each test. The first run, of course, is Intel's stock cooler, and at idle, I had a very respectable 39 degrees Celsius, and at full load, only hit 63 degrees Celsius. Now, I'll say only 63 degrees Celsius, because for my Q6600 Model G0, it has a maximum temperature of 71 degrees Celsius. So with this thing overclocked to 2.9 gigahertz, 63 degrees is very respectable. Colder is better as long as it's not colder than ambient temperature. So let's see if we can strap on the Hyper TX3 and get this thing colder and run more efficiently. The second run, of course, is Cooler Master's Hyper TX3 with one fan installed. The way that Cooler Master designed and intended for you to strap this thing to your motherboard right out of the box. At idle temperatures here, I received 36 degrees Celsius and at full load only hit 47 degrees Celsius. So right away, you can see that it's about 16 degrees colder than stock and it's a great improvement over stock and a good replacement. But Cooler Master did include a second fan mounting kit in this box for a push-pull airflow design. So let's see if we install a second fan and see if it's actually necessary here. For the third run, with the second fan installed, I received idle temperatures as low as 35 degrees Celsius and full load temperatures of only 46 degrees Celsius. This is a full one degree difference over one fan, so it's not much of an improvement, but if it's that one degree of cooling that you need, then you may want to add a second fan. The only design flaw that I found was where Cooler Master decided to go with the push pin style application just like Intel with this. They weren't quite Intel quality with the push pins, but they still worked, except two of mine kept popping out. So to fix this, I went to the hardware store, got some nuts, bolts, and washers, strapped it directly to the motherboard, and ran the tests again with it seated correctly without it popping out, and the temperatures were so much lower that I had to include them. At idle, I had 32 degrees Celsius, and at full load, I only hit 44 degrees Celsius, and I ran the test several times. I would say if yours is seating correctly with the push pins, then you should get similar results. If it's not and it's popping out, either send it back or... You can do what I did and install these nuts, bolts, and washers and make for a really good connection to the CPU. So rather than just to leave you with those clips, I wanted to make this graph to kind of show everything all over again to show where we went from stock to one fan to two fans to two fans bolted in. 
And as you can see, the TX3 is a great choice over stock, but we all knew that to begin with. I just wanted to show an in-depth temperature comparison to help anyone that was on the fence decide if this cooler is going to work for them or not. So I really appreciate you watching this and I uh, hope you have a great day.